Where our money goes to every week is a mystery. It just goes. But we do know where it comes from, a place where they really do make tons of money, the Royal Mint. Here on London's Tower Hill, about 10 million coins are struck every week, not only for use in Britain, but for half the world. Pro nickel for our so-called silver coins, real silver for some foreign coins, brass and bronze, they're all used at the Royal Mint. Each morning, the weight of old coins or new alloys and metal is carefully noted, and at the end of the day, the weight of coins made must tally. Security is strict. Melted down, the compound alloy is cast into bars, which are then rolled out into long strips of the thickness required for the coins, accurate to a two thousandth of an inch. Getting the strips of metal to the exact thickness is all important and is achieved by repeated rolling. Now, when the blanking machine punches out the coin blanks, their weight is sure to be correct to specification. And all the governments insist that the weight of their coins should be exact to a fraction of a grain. This is hard cash in the making. And in fact, the Royal Mint is famous for the hardness of its coins, a big selling point abroad. Temporarily, though, the coin blanks are annealed or slightly softened in the furnace in preparation for the die stamping to come. After being cleaned by acid in pickling drums, the softened blanks are now dried by hot air. One of the oldest of our state-owned industries and the history of our mints goes back 2,000 years to Julius Caesar's time, the Royal Mint is constantly looking for production methods that will increase efficiency. In the coming press, the blanks are impressed on both sides and milled on the edges in the case of our so-called silver coins. This is done by squeezing the blank between two dies and against a grooved colour. As one blank is stamped, it's automatically pushed away and another is fed into position, so that the presses can work at from 90 to 120 blows a minute. A final check is made visually by trained checkers who watch the coins coming round a double moving belt. Rejects go for melting down the next day, and the others are sent onto a machine which automatically counts them into bags for dispatch. Before the war, these coins would have contained 50% of silver. Today, they contain no silver at all, saving it for industry. But like all the coinage struck in this home of loose change, it's still money. Lovely, difficult to get hold of, legal tender. Where does it all go to?